And many of those mentions on Newsmax are dismissing the attack! This is critical to understand that it's so normal now on the right to deny, to deflect, or in the words of Carlson, to say the committee is wholly illegitimate. I'm saying it's important, and because it is important, it's being rejected by the MAGA media. Good and gracious Mark Dice, I give you thanks today, as I do all days. First and foremost, for the gift of your Brian Stelter voice. We ask that you bless this video and this channel, that it may nourish and sustain us, and strengthen our ability to do your will. Amen. <coughs> Hello all you beautiful YouTube and welcome back to <laughs> where I watch those gaslighting Democrat Party hacks so you don't have to. Fuck yeah! Speaking of the theme, <laughs> what would you all think about me changing it to my real name? Let me know in the comments if you care either way, then give me a follow on Twitter to see what my real name is. This week, the January 6th committee moves to prime time, holding a key hearing on Thursday with previously unseen material and witness testimony. That's what's being promised. Ooh, this has all the familiar symptoms of a prime time UFO show that promises footage that's going to expose the alien agenda. All right, so the kangaroo court known as the January 6th committee is about to launch their first prime time theatrical performance that's sure to be everything we all know it will be a democrat party campaign ad for the midterms i say this because this sham of a committee is purely partisan it's all democrats with two republicans who are known for being fiercely anti-republican remember nancy pelosi refused republican choices for committee members and what we got are republicans in name only akin to nicole wallace or adam kinzinger i'm gonna fry some taters but first give me just a moment to tell you about this special offer for prepare with drone tech Com. Friends, temperatures aren't the only things rising. Gasoline prices, food prices, tensions throughout society, global conflicts, supply chain breakdown, you name it. Experts say the looming global food crisis will be worse than ever. What should you do? Go to preparewithdronetech.com and get your long-term emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply while you still can. My Patriot Supply is America's largest preparedness company with millions of satisfied customers, me included. Act quickly and save $150 on a three-month emergency food kit. These kits provide breakfast, lunch, dinners, drinks, snacks, totaling over 2,000 calories a day. So go to preparewithdronetech.com and save $150 on your three-month food kit. That's preparewithdronetech.com. Get your family's emergency food while there's still time. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. It is undoubtedly important, but will it register with a mass audience? Over the last 10 months of the committee's investigation, we've already learned so much thanks to scoop after scoop from CNN and other outlets. Yeah, that's because all those headlines were partisan political spin that amounted to nothing. From the same people who insistently repeated bombshell for four years under Trump that amounted to nothing. Another bombshell. 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 This is a bombshell. It is a bombshell. I am beginning to resent the word bombshell. Yet, pro-Trump media has denied, deflected, defended, or just outright ignored the headlines. Talk about deflecting. I will constantly remind people that CNN and other Democrat networks fueled and incited years worth of riots, death, and destruction based on conspiracy theories, myths, and outright lies. All with a clear purpose of influencing the 2020 election. I mean, think about it. The coup plot was rooted in a big lie. And ever since then, new lies have surrounded it. Lies heard on shows like Tucker Carlson's on Fox and Greg Kelly's on Newsmax. It's so important to understand the divide in the media when it comes to January 6th. Look at MSNBC's coverage. January 6th mentioned more than 800 times so far on MSNBC this year and fewer than 150 times on Newsmax. And many of those mentions on Newsmax are dismissing the attack. Settle down, Brian. I have a feeling that's the most exercise you've gotten in the last decade. Trust me, you're gonna find similar divergent numbers when it comes to covering stories that the Democrat media wants to move on from. The Trump base does not want to hear about the coup attempt. The Trump base does not want to hear about the violence and about who inspired it and incited it. They don't want to hear the revelations at the hearing this week. Because it is important, it's being rejected by the MAGA media. But it's hard to imagine Tucker Carlson at 8 p.m. Eastern, who calls the committee illegitimate, Tucker Patriot Purge Carlson, giving up his time slot 
to hear the truth about January 6th. It is illegitimate. It's a purely partisan group that's spreading disinformation to help Democrats in the midterms and who are attempting to enforce standards against their political opponents that they themselves are not held to. Just ask yourself, would Democrats, Brian Stelter, or anyone give credibility to a Republican committee on the last few years of Democrat-supported riots that consisted of all Republicans and two Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema? Not a chance. How is anyone outside of fringe Democrats supposed to take this seriously when you all had nothing to say except mostly peaceful about all the chaos you've caused? I know that they would call this whataboutism, but it's really just about applying equal consistent standards. Who was it that violently attacked Washington DC and the White House in 2019 with the express purpose of getting into the White House and physically removing Donald Trump? It resulted in the Secret Service moving Trump to the White House bunker, which the media mocked and laughed at. That's that sounds like an insurrection based on their own standards. How about when the Black Caucus and Dianne Feinstein tried to overturn the 2000 and 2004 elections by invalidating the votes in Florida and Ohio? Was that a coup attempt? Based on their standards, yes, but they are never held to their standards. Speaking of lies, who is it that claimed and continue to claim that police officers were killed in the Capitol by protesters? This is a lie that was even recently told by Joe Biden, but without any of the hand waving from the fake fact checkers. One officer died of natural causes the next day and a few others strangely committed suicide. Why would they do that after one pretty mild riot, at least compared to the left-wing riots we witnessed for two years? How many officers committed suicide after those those two years of violent left-wing riots. I don't know because there's literally zero stories about it in the media. So kind of strange that multiple officers kill themselves after this one. But forget all that. Tater here thinks it's a right-wing conspiracy that nobody cares about the charade outside of Democrats. If everything were reversed, this video would be Brian Stelter denying the legitimacy of the committee and justifying CNN's lack of coverage because doing so would be helping Republicans to spread harmful disinformation. Here's my advice. You can do whatever you want, but you should let those of us who do this for a living watch it so you don't have to. It is designed to gaslight and enrage you while motivating blue and non-democrats to go out there and save the party from a red wave. That's another one in the books. As always, thanks for watching. Smack that like button, share this video, and leave a comment to let us all know what you think. See you all on the next one.